In this video, I'm showing my 3D printed ceiling mounted articulating camera rig, which was printed on the Piopoli Phenom using Sariatech resin. Stay tuned. Listen, making these videos takes time and the production of it all is in addition to the content that I share. Working in a small shop, that can be a pain and at any given time I've got several projects in the works and moving cameras, machines and framing shots can distract from the actual work. I don't have a lot of space so anything I can do to improve that is a win. To that regard, I originally thought that a camera boom was the right answer. Turns out that even a boom takes floor space and before I knew it, the boom wouldn't fit through my walkways, leaving my video stuck to, well, you know, this view. Today I'm walking through my solution to give me more flexibility to shoot different angles in my shop while freeing up some floor space. Now I'm a maker, so designing the right solution for a setup was the first objective. Next was to leverage the strong engineering resins by Sariatech that I recently tested. But why would I use resin? Well, I wanted to prove to myself that it could be done for one. Two, people only seem to use 3D printing for non-functional items. And three, I wanted to use the huge build volume of the Piopoli Phenom for a real engineering project. That said, as with most of my projects, they all start with inspiration or industry research. I look to see how others have solved for this. A few internet searches later, aside from the commercial camera rigging that you can find, I found a couple DIY projects that shared a similar objective. Great work, but none of them really meet my specific level of finish. So I turned to parts for inspiration, like Master Car. Oddly enough, I find this almost as fun as making something. The conceptual research, parts have a way of fueling that process. Bringing ideas to life, they also have a way of derailing existing projects. So I carefully walked the line between research and diversion. With that well-known articulating lamp in mind, I was thinking of an inverted version that could hold the payload at scale. I decided on using a triple T-slotted framing rail, or 80-20 extrusion for most of us, as the main slide rail, along with double T-slotted framing rails for the articulating gimbal arm supports. I planned on using Delrin wheels for the base sled that rides on the extrusion track, and lots of bolts and knobs for McMaster car. All the connecting parts, brackets, bodies would be designed and printed with my tough mix of Sariatech resin, and we'll talk about that later. In addition to using a good strong mixture with minimal elongation and high shear strength, I plan on designing the parts to be 10 millimeters thick to give the best chances of success for the workload that it needs to carry. That said, it was designed to hold my Nikon DSLR with an 18 to 135 hefty chunk of glass on the front of it. The total payload with Sling Studio module was around six and a half pounds. This will come into play as I determine the spring strength that I'll need to compensate for that camera and frame weight. Over in Fusion 360, I started pulling in stock components. I searched online and found the 80-20 extrusion models and imported those into Fusion. The first task was determining the best orientation of the rail on the ceiling. After a few different considerations, I chose to mount it wide and flat, and this would keep it low profile while providing a face to leverage for the lateral forces I expect from the main slider body. With that, I modeled the Delrin wheels and began to place them in the desired orientation on the beam. I planned for four wheels riding on the top of the beam with four wheels riding on the side of the beam, as well as a custom linear bearing milled from Delrin registered in the T slots on the bottom of the beam. With the wheel and bearing contact on all four sides, it would prevent twisting while allowing for easy movement in the finished assembly. The body was designed around these wheel placements. The top wheels would use 5mm dowel pins as retainers, while the side wheels would use a 50mm M5 bolts as their axle. These M5 bolts would also hold the face to the slider, which is the primary load bearing part. On the slider face, I incorporated an M10 elevator bolt to serve as the rotational axis for the arm. The arm mounts on this elevator bolt sandwiched between two thrust bearings with a large nut and thread lock, holding it all together. For the arms, I designed an end cap that's mounted on each piece of extrusion. It provides a pivot hole for the M8 bolts, which I used to hold them all together. Designing the parallelogram arm assembly was pretty straightforward. I just adjusted the arm positions to account for the width so that it could fully collapse. Once the ratio was right, I finished the design arm elbow and carrier. For the carrier, I wanted to incorporate a ball head for its flexibility and mounting options. For that, I located a 75mm bowl and incorporated it into the carrier design. With the arms, elbow, and carrier designed, 
I pulled in bolts and knobs from McMaster car and added the joints to the assembly. With joints in the assembly, I could test out the functionality and range of motion of the design. For the expansion strings, I really could have used some help from a mechanical engineer, but through trial and error, I settled on a ratio of three to one because of the orientation and max travel of the pivot points of the arms. So on the top arm with a load of 10 pounds and extension of four inches, I chose an expansion spring with a load of 40 to 60 pounds at full extension. And for the lower arm with the load of six pounds in the same expansion, I chose a spring rated from 18 to 33 pounds. We'll talk about the tuning of the tension springs later. With the design dialed in, I exported the parts and sliced them in Cheeto Box. Is it Cheeto Box? Cheeto Box? Cheetah Box? Whatever. Files were sliced, I had to try a few different settings because of how tough this resin is to print with, and the large format of the Piopoli Phenom doesn't make it any easier with its high pill force. The files were uploaded to a thumb drive and then printed on the Piopoli Phenom. Now let's talk about this machine. If you're not familiar with Piopoli, they've been an industry leader in resin printers for years now. Their products include the Moai line of SLA printers and they've now got larger, faster, and higher resolution Phenom printers. The build area on the Phenom is incredible and demands the best ideas to fully utilize its volume, which is exactly why I chose this project for it to prove it out. While the printer supports all 405 nanometer UV resins, you'll get the best results with Soriatech Fast resin. The mixture I used for this project was based on the results of my recent resin mixing testing video that I did a couple weeks ago. This new mixture is a lot tougher and the formulation of 40% blue, 40% fast, and 20% tenacious. As a rule of thumb on these larger printers, the tougher the resin, the longer the cure time. The large bed of the Phenom has a high peel force. It's the force required to peel the part from the bed after it's cured. And tuning your layer times is critical to ensure that it can withstand this force and make good prints. You'll want to be careful with cupping and thin supports for the best results and surface finish, but I could talk about that in another video. After a couple of tuning test runs, I printed my parts out on the Phenom. Even though this printer is fast, the tough resin mixture took longer times to print than normal. And these parts are big. For reference, the base and carrier together took 48 hours to finish the print. For post-curing, I cleaned the parts in 99% IPA, allowed them to fully dry, and then cured them for 20 minutes in my UV chamber. Assembly was easy and went together well. The rail was mounted on the ceiling with the base pre-installed. The arm was then mounted to the elevator bolt and thrust bearings, and once it was mounted, the arm was installed on the base. I didn't get a lot of pictures of this because of the difficulty and weight of the parts. With this rig, in the future I won't have that as an excuse because this thing can move around and pretty much shoot any angle of my shop. With the arm mounted on the rail, I added the tension springs to hold the arm at half compression. Providing support and extension on demand, the tension of the springs could be adjusted by sliding the spring mount points on the arms. Next was to try it out, and this was the most rewarding part. It actually moved. On the carrier, to add more range of motion, I added a few extra mount holes, as well as I mounted a Z-plate on the ball head. This allows for the camera to pivot to face directly down. Now with the arm and rail working as designed, I wanted to add some safety to this thing as it is hanging directly over my work environment. To do that, I added secondary leashes to just about every point of failure. Using stainless steel cable crimps, those were screwed into beams to ensure a safe secondary form of retention. With that, I was feeling a little better about this. Not that I don't trust the Soriatech resins, but it's the smart thing to do. I mean, I don't really know how long this resin is going to last or how it's going to age or change any mechanical properties over time, so I decided to cover my ass, or rather my head. Either way, I'm super excited about all the new camera possibilities that this rig opens up, as well as the space it opened up by allowing me to remove the boom from my shop, so it's a win-win. In the end, the Soritech resin worked out great for this solution, and these resins are seriously tough. The Soritech resins don't have a strong smell, which is great because the prints took quite a long time. The job couldn't have been done without the huge build volume of the Piopoli Phenom. I'm really excited for the projects I've got lined up for this machine. With the holiday season now officially upon us, expect some themed technical ideas to come to life in the coming weeks. So that's exciting. Well, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed this overview of my DIY 3D resin printed ceiling mounted camera rig. What do you think? Leave your comments below, I'd love to hear. I've put links for all the products I used in the description below and purchasing them costs the same and helps support the channel. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. It'll help keep you informed on future updates. If you like this particular video, give it a big thumbs up. That lets me know you like it and that's kind of how the system works. In the meantime, be safe, have fun, and I can't wait to see you next time.
Hey, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. It's how we're building the community. Also, allow me to bring better content. Also, check me out on these other social networks. There's lots of cool stuff there, too. Solid. Resin. I don't think it's gonna break. That's what she said! <laughs>